Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. It's Sunday evening, February 17. It's 10.30 in the evening. Teenagers have caused the schedule to go kablooey, but we're up and running, and we're doing this anyway, so let's get right to it. I'm your host, DT, meteorologist from weatherist.com, an all-around Chesterfield playboy. Uh, this We'll be talking on this particular issue here, February 21-22 event and also the end of the winter so let's get right to it. a lot to talk about here we'll start out first with some comments about the february 20th 21st and 22nd event second event um with respect to the midwest and the plain snowstorm that's obviously going to take place that's uh, that's a give me that's not part of the forecast uh the the one that i was the part of the forecast that i'm concerned about here and which i have to con con concede that what i thought was going to happen is not going to happen is has to do with the intensity of the ice storm threat for North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland. Uh, there's probably going to be some icing in this area on the 22nd, but mostly over Virginia and Maryland, nothing over North Carolina. And it's not going to be nearly as uh, extreme or as significant as I thought it was going to be. So no reason just to dance around this. At all. I'm not going to have to wait till the 22nd to admit that I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I know I'm going to be wrong. Uh, you know, you can see it coming. So let's just say it. I'm wrong. Uh, and uh, it's important to say it, and, but it's also useful to figure out what's going on, why things didn't work out the way I thought they were going to be, and um, uh, this event coming up here for this week is also going to be useful for showing how indices like the PNA, the negative NAO, the negative arctic oscillations, all these different things uh, can actually end up working even though they seem to be supporting a really cold pattern or potentially significant East Coast storm, it doesn't work out. So this is a really useful case in that regard and something that uh, weather hobbyists and uh, meteorologists around the uh, uh, the world really need to pay attention to a little bit here because this is a very useful textbook case of why everything seems to be setting up and still something else goes wrong. So let's take a look at some of these teleconnections here. This is the Arctic Oscillation. As you can see, it looks pretty negative right through the next two weeks. I mean, there's it's, it's negative. It's the most sustained negative it's been since probably... Um, November, I would think. And then the next slide here, this is the negative, this is the NAO for covering the whole area of the NAO. And it's, again, look, consistently negative. This is the most sustained, most negative and most sustained negative NAO since November. It's right through the, into early March. Looks good. What's the problem? And then this is the PNA, which is you know, negative early on and then turns positive up in here, as you can see that, and we, of course, that's a ridge on the West Coast, so that would appear to be fairly promising looking as well, but it doesn't. So uh, let's go to the next slide here. And this is the western phase of the NAO, uh, and this re represents, this measures a portion of the NAO. This is the portion by Greenland, Labrador, and Canada, and the more west, the, when the, w the negative NAO western side of it is very negative, that's better for winter storms on the East Coast. So uh, eastern-based negative NAOs do not support East Coast snowstorms, but the western ones do. And again, you can see a very strong, very clear signal all the way through from all the models here that this is negative NAO right through to early March. So again, what's the problem? Well, we'll take a look at it and see. Now, this here is a European model valid for, this is the 500 millibar map, for the morning of February 21st, which would be Thursday. Now, uh, there are two specific features here to talk about. The first one, number one, obviously this is the a big low coming out of the Great Basin. It's going to bring a lot of snow to the Plain States, uh, into the upper Midwest, so on and so forth. We all know that's coming. Now, this is feature number two, which is the large ocean low, the 50-50 low. Now, typically, the 50-50 low is low is found here. Where it's latitude, where the latitude is 50 degrees north and longitude is 50 degrees. That's where it's located out in this whole general area. But as you can see, it's here, it's over Maine. That's significantly further south. And because it's further south, we're getting this huge bulge here in the jet stream right over central Canada. And that's preventing system number one from coming southward and also begins to slow up the cold air from coming in. And that begins, so uh, even though right now we have a lot of cold air coming southward, it doesn't stay that way. And we'll see how that works out in just a second here. Now, this is 120 on the morning of the 22nd. Now, the 50-50 low is still here, still way to the south. And, of course, because of that, and because we've got this huge ridge here now, like this, the low, which was down here, and now here, is now up going this way. It cast, it can't, it's blocked. I originally was under the impression that this low 
was going to go this way, undercut it, and we get the snow and the ice that way. That's not happening. This ridge is too big, and it's not letting it do it. And that's clearly, the models are very clear about this. So my initial expectation, what I thought was going to happen last week, is just wrong. I'm going to be wrong. Now, this is the uh, surface map here from the uh, European this afternoon. This is valid uh, the 21st of Thursday. And you can see the, the cold area here is pretty impressive. Look at all the north winds bringing down this Arctic air. That's very nice. And here's the Arctic front just like this. But notice the southeast winds here. See these southeast winds coming up? And there's our low. So we've got a lot of snow up in here, but we have a lot of warming coming in. So the snow goes over to rain in, uh, in Missouri and southern Illinois, maybe even to Des Moines and, and Chicago. Now, if you look at the local image map, now we can see this is as of 1 a.m. here on the uh, 21st, uh, 22nd of February. And this is our, free, our you know 32 degree line. You can see that here. And there's our 850 line. We can see that here. So this would all be ice in this area. Anything north of this would be snow. We can see some snow here. And this is all rain down in here. So, But on the morning of the 22nd, it looks like we're getting some sort of frozen precip here. Now, this is the morning of the 22nd. This is the European model from this afternoon. And, of course, the low in the Midwest, remember how strong it was right here? Now look where it is. It's much weaker and it's dying. There's a triple point low here. We have a little bit of a ridge here, a little bit of ridging. I know it's high pressure, I should say. A little bit of damming. This is a wedge. You see that wedge of cold air coming in this way. The ridge was not the correct word. I meant to say a wedge there. So, the, obviously, if you have any sort of precip coming in this way into the cold air, we might be getting some snow and ice. Maybe. But Chicago, look at Chicago, they're very close to the rain snow line if they haven't moved over already at this point. And that's important because back here, by the way, Tom Skilling, WGN, last week was forecasting a major snowstorm for Chicago. So that does not look like it's happening now. So now this is the morning of the 22nd for February. And we can see, again, if we call up, uh, let me call up my market here, this is the 32 degree line, this is the zero line. So all this precip in here is snow up in here but look what's happening all the precip is here and this blows on through and then there's nothing there's a the whole thing is falling apart in here there's not a whole lot of heavy precip coming up so we have to get an initial burst of snow and ice it's over this is the morning of this is yeah the morning of the 23rd and now we have our coastal low forming but now we've lost the cold air see the coastal lows right here as you can see and that but we've lost the cold air the rain snow line is way to the north and this system is way up here in minnesota uh, wisconsin so it's a much, much weaker, non-threatening system, indeed. Now, this is the uh, European ensembles for valid for the 21st. And again, here the European ensembles actually have a pretty big high. You can see right there, bringing down more cold air. And now, if the high is actually that far south, that might help things a little bit in terms of the icing. There's our northwest winds. Here's our very intense low, big snowstorm up in here, and potentially icing if the precip gets in there fast enough. And this is the uh, morning of the 22nd, and we can see a little bit of a wedge right in here. You can see right in here the isobars. Call it up here. A little bit of wedging right in here. There's our high trying to come down. There's the low. And the precip, like I said, is coming this way. But it's not a lot. It's falling apart very quickly, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on your point of view. Unfortunately, with regard to my forecast. Now, this is the GFS from this afternoon. And again, the rain snow line has moved. You can see this is the, this here line here, the big black, thick blue line. I'll highlight it here for you. This is the rain snow line. It's moved way north of D.C. into Philadelphia. And there's some precip down in here and some precip in here. A little bit of Virginia, but not much. A little bit of a wedge down here. Maybe some icing early on the 22nd, but not a big deal. And this is by the evening. And we can see a lot of precip in the southeast here. You can see all the precip down in here. And then all the precip is in here. And then in here, in Virginia and Maryland, Pennsylvania, not much. The whole thing just flies apart in two different directions. Definitely not going to be a big deal for the east coast at all, for the, especially the northeast. Not even a snowstorm for the northeast at all for what it looks like right now. Now, this is the GFS model, and it shows the total snowfall through the morning of the 23rd or 1 a.m. And we can see that... Uh, Call it up right here so you can see it. Chicago doesn't get much. Look at that. What a screw job for Chicago. They were going to get all the snow in the forecast, and so now they're not. And instead, all the big snow falls up in here. Tough break for Chicago. Uh, now, if we actually look at the precip type from the GFS, and I'm not a big fan of this particular product, but it's useful somewhat. You can see there is an ice potential here. This is for 1 a.m. on the morning of the 22nd. We can see some icing in this whole area right here getting into Virginia. So, and then uh, we go next slide. This is the morning of the from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. And again, we see some icing in western or northwestern Virginia. You can see it here. Very nice icing in this area. 
and banned into Ohio and Illinois. So there is some threat. It's just not as big as what I was going to thought it was going to be. So, and since I was under the impression that the potential existed for a major ice storm, I'm not going to say, well, ice a little bit and then declare victory. I'm going to be wrong. So, and then it moves up here on the evening of the 20, on the afternoon of the uh, 22nd up into D.C. and Pennsylvania, where there might be some more icing up in there. So some icing over western Virginia, Maryland, southern Pennsylvania, central Virginia looks a lot less threatening than it did. Now, the MGO has turned hostile to the idea of extended winters. And uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll see how that works out here. Now, this is the actual plot of the MJO. Now, this is sad, January 8th to February 16th. So it started here January 8th, and this is February. There's 15, there's 16. It's now moved into phase four. See that? It stalled in here, did a little stall here, and then it rapidly moved out. And this is pretty fast movement. You can see the thing really picking up speed here. These are pretty big segments. So this kind of surprised me a little bit. I thought it was going to stay in phase two or three till the end of the month, and it has not. So obviously the forecast has to change because the atmosphere has changed. Now, why is that important? Well, if we go back here for one second, suppose we were in phase three. What does that look like with regard to temperatures? That's pretty cold in the northeast and the Midwest states. But look at phase four. That's a pretty mild looking pattern. Then if we go into um, precipitation, phase three all in the west here, but phase four, that's a Midwest storm right there. And even phase five, good precipitation in the plains in the Midwest where they really could use it. So clearly as we go into March, we're going to be in phase five and phase six, which would indicate a pretty wet March for the Midwest. Now, longer term, we can see the pattern is in fact breaking down. This is the day non European. They've got a pretty big storm here, as you can see, um, right over Chicago again. And obviously, there's a lot of warm air coming up in here. The 50 50 low is gone. The NAO is gone. We're getting all this energy coming in from the West Coast. So, this is a totally different looking pattern. This is the day 10. Now, you look at this, you think initially it's not that bad of a winter pattern. Here's our 50 50 low. We have a little bit of a uh, negative NAO here, but it's now east based. <coughs> We have a little bit of ridging in here uh, and a big low in the, over the Great Lakes, but look at all the warm air streaming in. There's no way of getting this cold air into the country with this sort of pattern. Even though we've got the features we want, this sort of intense big ridging here over Canada shuts off the cold air. It's really what it does. And this is the, the European air, day nine, the surface map, day eight, I should say. There's potential for a lot of significant severe weather all, all in this whole all area right here. You see, it's the low, and we got, could get a lot of severe weather up in here. And then this is the European uh, Day 9. I mean, oh my God, this is nice storm for the upper, upper plains and the western Great Lakes. A lot of severe weather all up in this whole area potentially, right up in here. Very impressive, as you can see. My marker is not working for some reason. There you go. A lot of severe weather possibilities in there. Now, as we go into the future, this is the 17th. This is March 3rd. The, the, the European model shows that the MGO cycle finally dies off. This here is the GFS showing it dies off. This is the UCMET showing it dies off. And this is the European Weekly showing it dying off after it gets into Phase 6. And in Phase 4, I mean, this is Phase 3 for the G, uh, This is, yeah, Phase uh, 3 for the um, MGO. And you can see that it's also a... Uh, a pretty uh, interesting looking map here. Uh, no, actually, this is, this is I'm sorry, this is phase four for March. And we can see above normal heights over most of the country. So this is not a pattern which is conducive to a cold pattern. Now, this is phase three, which isn't bad. But like I said, we're now in phase four, and it's pretty much over and done with. Anyway, that's the, with the, this week in weather. Sorry it came in so late, and it's a little uh, discombobulated there, but teenagers will do that. This is meteorologist DET. I'll talk to you soon.